Bet you haven't seen a YouTuber pull one of those out. Good afternoon, and welcome to my little corner of the internet. I've been playing around with an idea in my head while working on this discussion, and ashamedly, I've realized it plays a bigger part in my life than I'd like. This idea being what I affectionately call punk rock syndrome. It serves as an opposite to the hipster liked them before they were cool movement, and is more like, this sucks, I couldn't tell you why, I just know I don't like it. I experience this mostly with music and YouTube creators. Some good examples of times I've been affected with punk rock syndrome has been with Gus Johnson, Daniel Thrasher, and uh, Cody Ko. All three being incredibly popular, talented, and hilarious YouTubers. For some reason, for a long time, I was adamant that not only did I not like their content, but I was actively ignoring it when recommended to me, refusing to ever click on it. This could be because YouTube's algorithm recommends videos maybe a little too aggressively. I'm currently experiencing this with uh, Joseph Anderson's videos, which I love and I've watched all of, but YouTube, I've already seen this hour and a half video you are auto-playing. Stop it, dude. Let me go back to my two clicks fill. Anyways, my point being that now realizing this affliction, I try really hard to combat this punk rock syndrome by giving each of the creators a chance and watching a few of their videos, coming to a true and honest conclusion myself without letting my angry contrarian lizard brain jump to the conclusions for me, and usually being pretty happy with the content I end up watching. With all that being said, this was a hard one to set aside those misanthropic feelings. I watched a few of Logan Paul's videos ramping up to my viewing of his Flat Earth documentary, trying my best to avoid as much of this. As possible. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Logan Paul has more than his fair share of detractors, drama, and people looking to strip him of his influence. All of which I'm sure are 100% valid. I'm not trying to step in and say the man is infallible, perfect, pretty good, okay, but this project was something that made me question the individuals looking to defame him. Keep in mind this is the only project up to this point I've considered watching. I'm only saying this to give my perspective of Logan up to the point before I decided to look into this. I'm not trying to defend Mr. Paul or even change anyone's mind about him. He's a big boy, he can, and has been attempting to do that himself it seems. I would, however, like to take a look at his mockumentary he made a few years back and discuss it with you today. <laughs> The mockumentary starts out, and make no mistake, it is a mockumentary, showing some of today's more ridiculous conspiracy theories, and insinuating these can be pushed aside whilst the flat earth theory should be taken a little bit more seriously. The title card pans out to a CG flat earth and zooms in on the Paul house. On my second viewing, I thought this intro sequence was pretty clever, as it correlates with a conversation he has later with an actual flat earther who makes the claim that all photos of earth from space are just CG or composites. Afterwards, the plot is introduced in a sequence that I thought was a little funny. It's a parody of the Mr. B style Don't Leave the Circle challenge with the last two contestants on the brink of death. And I thought it added a bit of charm to the movie, as well as beginning to show keener eyes more familiar with YouTube or maybe Logan's content that this wasn't going to be a true documentary as originally promised. Following, Mike, a friend of Logan's and co-star of the movie, has a few freakouts that are a bit more of what I expected originally going into this. However, it is presented in a more mature and nuanced way, as opposed to us actually watching someone lose their mind. Uh, we see it in retrospect, which I appreciate, though it did worry me how much of this slapstick comedy we were going to have to watch. I can handle one or two jokes like this in a single project, but I was seriously concerned this early into the movie that it was going to devolve. That worry was quickly squashed when we confront Mike. This next segment took me from concern to completely in love with Mike's character. During the interview, he tells a story from his childhood and his experience with the flat earth. And the subtlety this dude uses to tell the story is impressive. I ate the rest of the peanut butter. I'm, so, I'm sorry, bro, I'll buy more of it. No. If you hate Logan Paul, if you hate his channel, if you hate his fans, or whatever, Please do me a favor and watch this video at least up to the 10 minute and 30 some second mark uh, where the interview ends and tell me what you think. 
That interview is by far one of the funniest things I think I have seen in a hot minute and probably the highlight of the documentary for me. Now that we are sold that Mike is in fact a flat earther, he spends the next few minutes playing and I think does a really good job of not overselling his role while at the same time going completely overboard as this character of a flat earther. Up till about this point before Logan interviews some kids, the movie has mostly been in the typical YouTube vlog format, which really helped my suspension of disbelief. I was sure that, though ridiculous, Logan probably hangs around some weirdos that could possibly believe that the Earth is flat, and is being seriously convinced while at the same time trying to act funny for vlogs. But this is where that ended, and I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was witnessing something intended for comedy, and I was all in. And I was very excited to see how far they were going to go with it. Also, I really loved... The child had a good point. This was slowly becoming a puzzle that not even I, the all-knowing and error-free Logan Paul, could solve. Come on, I don't gotta tell anybody why that's funny. That's funny. And let me tell you, dude, they go all the way, literally all the way to a Flat Earth convention hosted by Robbie Davidson, undercover, making a mockumentary. What reality did I slip into? During the speeches, we get clued into how Logan actually feels about the situation while Mike sticks to his character chanting the sweet nothings the two presenters we see spew out of their mouths and afterwards logan does some interviews with conference goers and he really takes the piss out of them i'm surprised no one at the conference thought he was up to no good and blew his cover because he's being a bit blatant i feel which of course is hilarious during this logan talks to a veteran who touches on briefly that they launched and tested icbms which i thought was pretty funny to come up not because of the historically low mental health our military can leave our veterans in and possibly make them susceptible to ridiculous communities like these. Editing Jazz here. In this bit of the video, I was using the missile ICBM point to talk about flight paths and how that's often a point the Flat Earthers will use to prove that the Flat Earth model is at least feasible, which, spoiler alert, it's not. But after watching H Bomber Guy's video again, I realized he does the argument a bit more justice. The longer I thought about it, the more I realized that leaving a poorly articulated version of that argument in my video would just lead to miscommunications and confusion. So please, just watch this video for an actually researched argument about this topic. Link in the description. It starts at 1448. But I'll leave uh, some links in the description of... Uh reputable sources showing that the flat earth model is not only impossible to prove but really easy to debunk that aside this piece of the movie ends on an interview with robbie davidson which doesn't go on for as long as i'd like it's forgivable because i'm sure it would be hard to stay in character and ask questions that would threaten robbie's livelihood while still getting genuine reactions out of him i am certainly not trying to insinuate that logan should be sasha baron cohen here but I would have liked to see this interview go a little bit more in depth than it did. This also starts the love arc that uh, sends Logan over the edge. <laughs> and he begins to believe in the flat earth theory as he falls for the Australian girl he meets at the convention. This is where I think the momentum starts to shift a little. Uh, the love arc of the story begins at like the last third of the video and it leads to probably the most disappointing part of the documentary. Uh, before that though, I really enjoyed the next scene in the hotel room. Evan Eckenrode has been the voice of reason this entire time and his frustration here as Logan is starting to actually turn is on point as the kids would say. I'm going to skim over most of the actual acting scenes. They aren't awful, but like this script, they are poorly written. Hehe, <laughs> I have been granted immunity because I addressed my bad writing. Logan has a pretty funny scene where he says the girl he met yesterday is rubbing off on him while doing a really bad, like, half Australian accent. And there is a song and dance which is funny and again, I think does a good job of poking fun at the Flat Earth community while not making itself too goofy. You know, right amount of goof here. We then are told that Logan is giving a speech at the conference, which I think most people saw during the time leading up to the documentary's release, but we will go over just because in the context of the documentary, it is a golden moment. Robbie introduces him, and he gives a short speech about how he attempts to not be ignorant and comes out of the Flat Earth closet. And you know Robbie was foaming at the mouth when he saw Logan Paul's name on the registration. A big name is often a shortcut to legitimize a silly movement like this, and I don't think a real celebrity or big name has tried to attach themselves to Flat Earth since B.O.B. fell off the face of the planet. 
After the speech, uh, Logan and his team congratulate and thank each other, and Mike pulls him aside and reveals the truth, telling Logan that he is in fact not a flat earther, and that the original statements that launched the escapade were just a joke. This is a strange place to take it, I think. Um, I'm trying to think of how they could have written out of how deep they got into this, and it's a little difficult, so I'm going to have to chalk it up to writer's block, but it still feels really weird. Like, the whole thing is weird, right? It's a goofy mockumentary. But there had to have been a more natural way out than Mike just got carried away with a joke and then just really wanted to go to Denver, right? Logan enters a Walter White fugue state, which I'm sure most everyone saw reported on as well, which I think I can understand a little bit more now that I think about it. Logan Paul Naked in Denver Streets is a pretty tough title to turn down, though I do think Logan did, a bit, did get a bit of retribution on this one, and I'd say well deserved. There is a quick debrief outro where they give a quick last interview to Logan, Casey, the Australian girl, and Mike where they make a few last minute jokes and the credits roll. There is no earth! No. I think it was very smart and tactical the way Logan positioned himself with the Flat Earth Society. I believe that he was aware that they would jump at the opportunity to have someone with his clout as a member and I'm honestly unsure who was more predatory in this situation. Logan Paul approached the Flat Earthers knowing that they would try to use him and ended up using them. It's a real life soap opera. The acting or writing wasn't fantastic but I would say on par with the video free to watch on YouTube and was true to what it wanted to present. The camera work was good for the size of the budget I assume they have, and the editing was insane. It makes me a little self-conscious about mine, and the subject matter and theme could not have been better. I really enjoyed this mockumentary, and it surpassed all expectations I had of the Logan Paul video. I think the only real part of the mockumentary I didn't enjoy outside of Mike just joking was the reception. A lot of people were really quick to point out that he was being dumb or crazy when they didn't know the context, but after the documentary, no one has really talked about it. I have, like most topics I discuss, watched a few reviews just to make sure I'm not completely off base. All of them were great, links in the description for these guys. And the biggest video I could find was by this YouTuber, as you little fucker he is. The only appreciation I see for this movie are a bunch of smaller channels like mine, and that kind of shakes my faith in the YouTube community a bit. I'm all for tearing down a guy because he's done some gross things, but I feel, at least right now, Logan has made a bunch of steps in the right direction. Why, as a larger community, has hardly anyone else given him props for this? I don't know. Like I said at the start, I watched a few more of Logan's videos just because I wanted a frame of reference for the mockumentary, and I found a few I enjoy. He has a follow-up behind the scenes of the mockumentary video I recommend, though it does contain a bit more. <laughs> than I personally want to deal with, but it does give you a much greater down-to-earth perspective of who Logan actually is, and I always appreciate that from a YouTuber. I hope Logan continues down this road of YouTube documentaries, much like iDubs and Emperor Lemon have, because I personally enjoy them, and I think they reflect a lot of maturity and self growth that I think can be hard to find in his other content. That's enough of huge YouTubers though, let's hop on over to YouTube Corner and see who we are showing appreciation for today. If you've been watching me for a while, then you know that I have done a lot of things in my past that I that I wish I could make go away, that I try to make go Hello, and welcome to YouTube Corner. Today, we are honoring Grainy Days. Grainy Days is a channel focused mostly on film photography. His content is undersaturated, flat, and I'll be honest, not much to look at, which perfectly matches his delivery, which is bland, monotone, and it will often put you to sleep if you aren't paying attention to his ridiculous clothing that a 30-some-year-old man should be embarrassed to wear. In all seriousness, his videos are presented in a dry and flat way, which contrasts so perfectly with the sass and sarcasm he drenches every second of screen time with. I'm hoping the monotone delivery of lines like- I saw a bear last weekend. Holy- Will never get old, and I don't want to an exist where his style is not appreciated. My favorite videos of his are his interview series he has, Bring It Back, where he triples down on the sarcasm, and his travel photography vlogs. He operates in a pretty small niche. I think he is excelling for his content being almost solely about film photography, but as a creator, I still feel his content is not being appreciated as much as it really should be. 
that will conclude this episode of Art Discussion. There will probably be another coming soon, um, another modular synth video, another random filler video, and then hopefully a new series. It's taking a long time, but hopefully you guys will like it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.